welcome to this video. Not a video. Shit. Welcome to the episode 50 I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast Spooktacular. <laughs> Cheers. Uh. Because this podcast is now 50 episodes in, I think it's kind of like a like a duty or a rule that you guys all give this fun their fucker matter fucker five stars on it, the fucking iTunes a bunch of shit on the YouTubes and um hopefully within the next I don't know soon I'll be getting all of the Spotify and other shit up so fucking deal and give us five stars and when I say us I mean me and you doing it, so us, because it's like a together thing. I get you, I get you. So, today we are going to be asking me the questions that is everything other than, okay? So that'll be fun. Thank you guys who sent questions in, I appreciate it. We'll be getting to those shortly here. And I just want to thank all the people who really dug the um, last episode about um, poetry and translation with Jens H. That was really cool, and I dug hanging out with him and talking to him about it. And Jens, if you're listening, everybody loves your voice. And so, like, why are you not doing your own podcast now? So, like, we've all already been telling you to do it. So, um and now it's time to, you know, shit or get off the pot, you know? But for those of you who dug that, on Wednesday, um, this coming up just a couple days from now, you will get to hear part two of that. Um, and we go into more detail on some poems and talk about the differences between America and Sweden and um, just talk shop. So it'll be good. So I'm looking forward to that. And, if you don't know already, Poems About Fucking is fucking out now. Okay? This this one's kind of beat up. Um, so, uh, run over there and get that. Blood Rag Volume 8 is out now. Poetic Anarchy Volume 3 is out now. And, um, yeah. And in the coming episodes, we're going to be talking about the new small press I'm doing. We're going to be talking about the crowdfunding campaign that starts March 1st, 2023 for my, the pre-orders for my new book, winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. It's going to be great. But first, let's get into those damn motherfucking shout outs. So first, I want to give a big thank you to... The motherfuckers on the Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Chase, to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. And then over in the thank you crew, I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, and to Jan. And I hope I'm saying your name correctly. And then for all of the swinging pendulums in the pit of Poe. We have the Anarchy Crew. So I want to give a big thank you to to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, to Andrew. Nope. Ah, fuck it. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Jessica, and Hannah. So thank you guys so much. You guys are the things that make the world go round. And, as always, the biggest, the biggest of the motherfucking shout-outs goes to the number one chappy over in the chat book of the month club, which you all can join, by the way. The SDG. All of you could join at the chat book of the month club. It doesn't have to just be the SDG, guys. But SDG is the queen of the castle right now, so... Just saying. Just saying. All right. So, I want to thank all of you guys. I appreciate all of you. 
And honestly, you guys inspire me so much to keep going and to strive and to like keep reaching farther. So like, I, I, you, you, I don't know if you guys know how much you guys actually mean to me. Like you guys mean the fucking world to me. So thank you guys for that. Now, now. Uh, let's light our stoves, finish our lukewarm coffee finish our cold beer and get into the A M A E right now. So this is just a celebration guys. So everybody have a drink, have a good time. So the first question is what, is, and this is from bunny. What is the most beautiful song you can think of right now? now honestly like whenever i think a beautiful song i think of i only have eyes for you by the flamingos it's just a fucking beautiful fucking song like nothing really tops that and bunny did ask another question about music and we'll get to that in a little bit here because it's over on a another spot but like what do you guys think what's the most beautiful song you've ever heard because um there is um What's that song? Uh, Time to Say Goodbye. The Bellagio Fountain song. Because I like to bust that out. Time to say goodbye. Yeah. Um, I get really loud, especially if I've been drinking when I'm singing that. Look out. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so here is a question from Ethan. My question is this. What is the scariest thing, sight, event, happening, etc., have you ever witnessed in person? If it is supernatural, what is the scariest regular natural thing you've witnessed? And what is the scariest supernatural thing you've witnessed? Okay. Let me see here. I had, I've had i been in a riot, not partaking in it, um, but it just like kind of like exploded around me. Cops came in with like mace and like ran in to the hall that we were in. Just started like spraying and whacking people with sticks and shit. And it was funny because like I had never been in a situation where... Like, people just, like, exploded around me, and then... Or, I also hadn't been in a situation where um, mace was being used. And I don't know why I thought to do this. Because, like, they weren't running at me, but they were, like, right there. But I grabbed my hoodie and put it up over my face, and then rolled over and laid down on the ground, and, like covered my face with my hoodie I could still smell it through the hoodie you just hear like feet running and you hear like the sticks hitting people and shit and as it goes it just gets slower and, and I mean yeah there's people yelling and screaming and shit but like you hear just like the the like gets slower and slower and slower and people are like screaming about their eyes and shit. So that was that was pretty fucking scary. Just because I didn't know what the fuck was happening. And then it just fucking happened like on top of me. But it's, I don't know. Like, it's so funny because if you like read my writing, like everything is torment. Everything is fear. Everything is like terrifying, you know? But like really like... I don't know if there's anything, like, scary in real life. I'm sure as soon as I walk away from this question, I'll go, oh, shit, yeah. But as far as supernatural shit goes, I don't even know how to explain it, but I've seen so many fucking things, dude, that don't make any sense. And not all when I was high or drunk or fucked up. But, like, I've seen, like, creatures flying. I've seen blobs floating um, I've seen colors float and streak through a room. Um, I've seen flames leave candles and, like, go, like, three or four feet up in the air from the candle. Um, I've seen people in my house. I've seen people, like, 
where there shouldn't be people. And whenever you see them, they're always, like, staring at you. Because I honestly think... And I don't know if this is, like, a backwards thing where it's, like, a... Like sitting outside of time in an energy transference or something like that or um some bullshit string theory i don't know i don't even want to start fucking talking about string theory right now but like when you notice them and they notice that you notice them they look as shocked as you do so there's a part of me that thinks that at a different time there was that person in the same place that I'm at now and they see me like I'm the ghost or I'm the intruder you know what I'm saying Um, but other times I think like it was weird because like when my kid was born there was a lot of shit like that going on where there were just suddenly people in my house and um, they would like kind of want to play with my kid or whatever and then they would notice me noticing them and they would get freaked out and then they would go from like dimensional to flat to just not being there anymore so it'd be like four dimensional to two dimensional to not nothing i don't know how to describe that any better than that but i get startled a lot so when i see people who aren't supposed to be there it freaks me out a little bit i don't know if they're ghosts i don't know what the fuck they are i don't care what they are i just know that they're there and they probably shouldn't be there so that um that makes my mind a little fucked up and it makes it harder when i'm out in public because then you're like thinking like like how many of these people am i seeing right now that aren't even really there You know, and it makes me start sounding like I'm a fucking crazy fuck, dude. So, uh, yeah, Supernatural is a bit harder because of all the experiences, whereas, like, in real life shit, things are never really that scary. Okay, so thank you for the question. Okay, so I got a a few more questions here. And um, we'll, we'll hit Bunny back up again on this one. Do you have a song that you listen to the most when you write? I don't think a song necessarily, but for the longest time, I used to listen to the first one, two, three, four, five, six. I used to listen to the first six Cramps albums, like back to back over and over again, um, all the time when I was writing for years. I just did that because it was just noise and it was so easy for me to like get into the groove of it and the whole fucking thing. And then for a long time, I would listen to second wave ska. And I did that for a couple years where I would just listen to like the specials, madness, bad manners, the selector, the body snatchers, uh, the beat, and then I would even throw in some, like, Dexies and um, oh, the Jam, the Clash, shit like that in with it. I would say probably lately. Oh, and then before that, like, back, like, ten years ago for years, I would listen to oldies all the time. Like, doo-wop and, uh, like, old rock and roll shit a lot. But I would say now... I probably listen to more like first wave ska and like rock steady, um, uh, I guess reggae and um, skinhead and rude boy shit. Um, I have a fucking giant playlist that lasts like three days or something like that with a bunch of shit in there that I like. So I could just put that on and that's like the Paragon's... uh, Desmond Decker, Prince Buster, Judge Dredd. Oh, and I have like Toots in there. Um, A little bit of Bob Marley, not a lot of Bob Marley. Uh, Jimmy Cliff. um, Just just all sorts of shit. Uh, John Holt. Fuck, John Holt, dude. 
um, just stuff like that. And I, I could write to that shit all day. And it's funny because like I don't listen to music as much now when I write just because like lately, I would say like maybe the last like three or four months, it's been really hard for me to get into that jam. Because, like, when I get like that, it's, like, that's the night. So, it, like, whatever, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, if I'm starting the music, I better have enough fucking wine to keep me going through the night. I better have enough beer if I need beer. I'll be playing the music and writing and dancing around and typing and doing the whole thing. And that will go on to, like, 3 or 4 in the morning. But lately, the last few months, honestly, I haven't had the time. And I know that sounds fucking stupid. You're like, all you have is time, you stupid fuck. But seriously, like, I, I've been doing so many different fucking things that I haven't had the time to just, like, unload like that. And just, like, completely... And, like, fade into the music and writing and shit like that. So maybe that's something I should be doing. But, Bunny, thank you for the question about writing when this was not supposed to be about writing. I'm just kidding. It's fine. I didn't even realize it until I started talking about writing. I'm like, oh, shit, this is about writing. So n no worries, no worries. So Jessica has some questions here. Okay, I'm going to try to do these. These are the questions. What was the worst purchase you ever made? What was the best purchase you ever made? And what's something you've always wanted but never bought? So here we go. Worst purchase ever made. This is fucking hard because, like, I really do not buy anything if I can help it. Like, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily super cheap, but I'm not going to fuck around with my money, you know? Like, I don't know. It, it goes back and forth because I would say probably the five acres in the desert. But at the same time, I really felt like I needed those two years or whatever out there to completely decompress but at the same time a lot of pain came from that you know but at the same time I needed it but at the same time it fucked me in a different way so that's kind of like that I would probably say this this might sound kind of stupid but storage units storage units I think are the biggest waste of money and you always think you need them because the stuff you're hanging on to is important or whatever but once you pay like two months of a storage unit you're like i could have sold that stuff and got i wouldn't even got as much as i'm paying for the fucking storage unit you know what i'm saying so i would say storage unit definitely storage unit is the worst thing i've ever spent money on what was the best purchase you ever made okay i'm gonna give you a couple here because i can't decide my honda I've had since 2013, so I've had it for 10 years, and that thing is a damn workhorse. I've toured in that thing, I've driven across country in it, I fucking had it in the desert, and it didn't die, touch wood. It's just, it's a good fucking car, dude. It's really good. Honda Element, like, it looks like a weird toy box kind of car that's on steroids it's like a what do you call that car a scion xb but like if you pumped that scion xb full of steroids that's what a honda element looks like um or a kia soul on steroids <laughs> there's all these cars that look exactly the same but a little different um but yeah so that car has done so much for me like if i didn't have that car i don't know what the fuck it would have done second um would be probably my macbook I any macbook this one or the last one i had um if i didn't have it i'd be fucked i wouldn't be able to make any money and um i'm so fucking grateful for this and then i'd probably say scrivener um third because that's where i do most of my writing so that's that's what I would say. Those those would be my things. And then finally, is there anything what 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 was it? What's something you've always wanted but never bought? 
a hooker. Huh, actually, that's not true. So let me walk that one back. That's shocking. Huh. Um, no, I would probably say probably a Vespa or a Fiat. It's funny because I used to want a motorcycle so bad. I was shopping for one. Like, just like a big cruiser. And I was going to get it. And I got to test ride it out and shit like that. It was fucking amazing. And the woman I was dating at the time. Because me being an insensitive asshole who didn't know information because the information was never given to me. I dared talk to her about buying a motorcycle when her uncle 10 years ago died in a motorcycle accident. Which is totally fucking sad, and I felt really bad about it. But in order for me to feel bad about something and have, like, kind of guilt about decisions I make, I would need to know that information before I would come and say, hey, I think I'm going to buy a motorcycle. But, um, so, that time I did not do it. And that was, like, probably the last time I actually was serious about getting a motorcycle. But now I just think, like, motorcycles look cool, and they're fun to ride and shit, but I just think there's something about, like, having to be on something that makes so much fucking noise that just shows how small your fucking dick is. You know what I'm saying? I don't know a better way of putting that. And I know I just piss a lot of motherfuckers off, but, um, I don't know. It's just, like... Yeah, loud pipes save lives. But you know what else saves lives? Not riding a motorcycle. So, like, really. Like, what are you going to do? Like, not putting a shotgun in your mouth and pulling the trigger saves lives. You know, but, but why the fuck is there a shotgun in your mouth in the first place? You know what I'm saying? So, whatever. I just, um... Vespas are cool as shit. I dig them. Because it's like, you can still get wherever the fuck you want to go. And except for that motherfucker right there, they're relatively not super loud. I've always wanted a Volkswagen Bug, too. But those are loud as shit. Fiats are cool. And I just like Fiats, I think, because of all the Jalo movies I watched. There's a lot of Fiats in them. And they really, they're one of those cars that really haven't changed its look over the years. I'm so pissed I didn't do it. Like back in like 2012, they were running this special that was like 900 down, 99 a month. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, mind you, I've never been inside a Fiat. So me getting inside a Fiat might feel like I'm getting a CAT scan and it might just be too tight. So I might hate it. But it's one of those things that I kind of always wanted. You know what I'm saying? But I was always kicking myself that I didn't take advantage of that great fucking deal they had going on. 99 bucks a month for a new car? Jesus fucking Christ. But I love my Honda, so it doesn't really fucking matter. So Jessica, thank you for the questions. And now, let's see what else we got. Sanja, 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 Sanja asks, what's your favorite movie? Now, this is, I don't think I have a favorite movie right now, but for years, like when I was really into film and really into horror and the whole fucking thing, there were three movies that I thought were the best movies that were ever made. And these aren't in any particular order, I'm just going to tell you. Um, Psycho, Bride of Frankenstein, and the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I thought those movies were just masterpieces, okay? But as far as look goes, I loved, and I still love it. Like, I'll put it on every once in a while, like, because there's like 30 different versions of it on YouTube. But um, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. But The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari looks amazing, and it's... German Expressionism from 1919. It's just a beautiful, beautiful fucking movie. There's no, like, real light. All the light is, like, painted on the sets. And um, there's a lot of over-exaggeration of props and stuff. It's just, it's great. I love it. And then when um, I, I started getting into filmmaking, 
And like I've talked about funny games. I'm not going to go on about that one again. But like David Lynch, I love David Lynch. I love Hitchcock. I loved Rope and Lifeboat because of the like single location film, you know. I thought that was brilliant. But when I was getting into wanting to make movies like seriously um or professionally, I guess. I was really into like cult schlock movies. Um, I loved the idea of being able to get movies made, you know, and having like a crew that you work with all the time and the whole thing. So I was really into Ed Wood. I was really into John Waters and I was really into Roger Corman and Pink Flamingos right there, you know, boom. It was like one of my favorite movies. Polyester, I think I liked better for a really long time. But like with Ed Wood, like Bride of the Monster, I always thought was a great fucking movie. Um, Plan 9 is classic, but I like Bride of the Monster better. And then um, with Roger Corman, I mean, you had all those amazing Edgar Allan Poe movies. And then the things that I liked the best from him was all the movies he made in the Philippines. So like all of the, like I love exploitation movies, especially from like the sixties and seventies. Like they were just so raw and there was like nothing cooler than that shit. But like, I loved all the like women in prison movies, like all the Pam Greer, Sid Haig flicks. I love black exploitation movies. Um, and you, you probably can't say that now. It's probably, like, a bad thing, but the fucking amazing. Um, but, yeah, like, so, like, The Big Dollhouse, The Big Bird Cage, Black Mama, White Mama, um, Coffee, uh, Black Caesar. But then just, like, Russ Meyer, you know, like, Faster Pussycat, um, Super Vixens, like, just fun, ridiculous kind of shit like that. Um, I was really into William Castle for a while uh, because I really dug the idea of turning a film into an event kind of thing. And he did some crazy shit. But yeah, so I don't know. Like, then I started getting into like Jess Franco and um, Jean Roland, just some more like racy kind of shit. And um, I just. I loved that whole fucking thing. And then I got into Jalo. So, um, really into um, Sergio Martino. I don't know, like Umberto Lenzi, I thought it was amazing. Didn't really like Argento very much. And I didn't really like um, Fulci very much. But like Mario Bava, um, Blood and Black Lace, uh, Five Dolls for an August Moon, Bay of Blood, like just amazing, amazing. But, um, yeah, Martino, man, like, fuck, amazing, like, all that shit, like, I love it, and then I don't know what the fuck happened, like, the only thing I really liked in the 80s was, like, David Lynch, in the 90s, early 90s, David Lynch, and since then, I just, I, I don't like anything, so that was um, a lot more than what you asked for. So, um, I hope that was a, no, I think I had another question over here, but I think it was kind of about writing. So, uh, I might not do it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, that's, that's a writing question. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave that one. So then I guess the last question here, um, is going to be from Caitlin and the question is, how does a person balance raising kids and not losing themselves? And that's deep as shit. I don't know, because I think it depends on what you mean by losing yourself. Like, are you talking about... The more I think about this question, the more I think that I could be misinterpreting it. How do you raise kids without losing yourself? Now, if you mean lose yourself in the lives of your children... That's one thing. If you mean lose yourself like you don't know who you are anymore, that's another thing. So I guess the answer to both would be to, and again, like this is just from me raising my kid, between me being afraid to 
like leave anyone with my kid or like put my kid in public school or anything like that out of like fear and because I knew if that was the case I wouldn't be around a whole lot because I was shooting movies all over the place I was touring I wanted to have my kid with me you know there are pros and cons to that that I could see now but at the time I just thought I'm like well this is how you do it like I need to raise my kid so my kid needs to be with me all the time so my kid was always not always but almost always on the road with me and my kid was almost always on set with me I spent a lot of time with my kid and for the most part I was trying to mainly because well, I was trying but at the same time my kid was curious but trying to get my kid to get into the things I was into instead of being like that like just person looking in from the outside waiting for their kid to tell them what they're into kind of thing so it would be like my kid was wanting to like know about movies because we were making movies, you know. So uh, me and my kid watched a lot of movies. And then when we would be on set, my kid enjoyed hanging out with the special effects people more than anything because she was really interested in how all that shit worked. So she ended up learning a lot of that kind of shit and a lot of makeup and stuff. And so then that was cool. And it was something we can talk about and something we can, um, kind of bond over, I guess. And then when she got old enough to wear like she can write and especially when she got old enough that she could type, um, then she started like writing little scripts and stuff like that, like to make little funny movies or whatever. And then she wanted to make some of them. And so uh, like I helped her make some of them, but it was like the whole thing was like us being into the same thing, you know? And then because she was a kid and watched cartoons, I got really into SpongeBob. I thought SpongeBob was the funniest shit in the world. I fucking loved it. So whenever, whenever SpongeBob was on, it was like a party. Like, oh, shit, SpongeBob's on. We, like, did a lot of stuff together. Like, if I wanted to go get a cup of coffee, it was like, let's go to Starbucks, get in the car. Coffee bean, get in the car. You know? It was like, we just did things together all the time. And it wasn't, like, a thing where... Because the only time I can see somebody, like, losing themselves in their kids is when the kids' lives are so busy doing other shit and you become the person that just, like, cleans up after them all the time. You know? Like, that's where I can see feeling you don't know who you are anymore because your whole existence is driving people around, picking up things for people, cleaning up after people in the house, doing everyone's laundry and all that other shit. And I'm not trying to downplay that that's a bad life. But if you're not careful doing all that stuff, that's what you put your worth as and that's what your identity becomes. And that's what makes it hard when like kids grow up and go to college and stuff like that or move out of the house. If your whole existence has been based around doing all of these things and not trying to um, foster independence, like that your, your kid's independence, that empty nesting thing is going to hit you really, really hard, you know? So there's that. Um, but yeah, like... I just, I feel like I was really lucky with my kid and I hope my kid feels that way, you know, but like I hear people talking about like crying babies all the time and oh God, like I haven't slept in three days and all this shit. And like, I don't know, like when 
my kid would wake up crying, I would pick my kid up, sing a song to my kid, you know, feed the kid, do what you do, and then you go back to sleep. And the kid would go to sleep. And, like... I don't know. And like those commercials or those like ads or whatever where you see like kids like running through the house like destroying shit, knocking stuff over. Like my kid never fucking did that. Like I've always had collectibles all over the place on bookcases and stuff like where my kid could reach for them. And when my kid was like a baby, like she would like crawl over to things and like my guitar would just be leaning up against the wall. And she would crawl up to things and go to touch it. And I'd go, you can't touch that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. And like, just from an early age of like leaving shit around, it was like, she knew like what things were mine and what things were hers kind of thing. Like she knew what she could touch and she knew what she couldn't. It's just like, I don't think like I'm a great dad. Like, I don't think I'm like King dad or anything like that, but it's just like, I feel like a lot of people make being a parent a lot harder than it needs to be. You know, like I feel like the reason, like the reason why I never had another kid is because I loved my kid so much, I felt like I couldn't, like, my heart couldn't take having another kid. Like, because, like, I love my kid so much it hurt. You know what I'm saying? So the idea of going through that again or having that with two kids, like, fuck that. Like, uh-uh, I can't do that. So um, that's that. I don't know if this answer helps or anything like that. Shit. Yeah, I don't want to end it on that. So, Caitlin, I hope that helped. I don't know. Like, if you want to, like, hit me up and, like, talk to me about this, like, one parent to another parent, um, just send me an email or something and we can talk about it and whatnot. Um, But I am going to hit one more question here. I don't know if this person wants me to say who they are, so I will keep this to myself about that. But... They asked, and this is a writing thing, and I'm doing this to kind of lighten the mood a little bit here. How many poems do you put in a chapbook? And the answer to this is anywhere, it could be anything from like, I think I've had as few as like eight in a chapbook and as many as like 21 or 22. It's somewhere usually between 10 and 20. Poems about fucking I think has like 14 but it's not the number of poems, it's how many pages you could fit in a book, okay? And for me, the sweet spot has been 32. Is that right? Yeah, 32. And the last two have been 36. And that doesn't sound like that big of a difference, but it totally is a difference. I might be going back to 32. Like, 32 with newsprint isn't very heavy, it feels okay in your hand. It feels okay in an envelope. Um, but 36 pages, that's like, to me, like right when something starts to feel unwieldy. And like, I don't know, like you can go to 40 probably if you have a stapler that can like hold that kind of paper together. But um, yeah, dude, I don't know. And I guess if you count the end pages, like that's 40 pages and that it just feels because I remember when I did uh, Ingrown Air and that was like 60 some odd pages. That was too much. That was way too much. But um, I would say 32. And again, your pages have to however you do your pages, it has to be in multiples of four because like each sheet of paper when you fold it sideways like that has four sides so um every sheet you have to think about or whatever like that but i think 32 i think 32 is like to me the best for a long time i did fucking 28 i did especially with um i think it was the time machine 
and some issues a weird mask. I would go in between 28 and 32. But, um, I don't know, 32 seems good. So, that's the answer to that. And so now, I need everyone to bend over, get wet, spread them, and it's time for the butt plugs. That got kind of fucking heavy. Not the questions, the fucking intro to the butt plugs, dude. What the fuck was I thinking? All right, so anyway, first off, this Thursday, I think it is the 16th or 17th, one of those two, Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, is going to be the first um, Poetic Anarchy with Matt Wall open mic night. And um, I'm doing this through uh, The Word is Right, and I'm doing the first and third Thursdays of the month at 4 p.m. Pacific, okay? And I'm pretty sure that's going to be streaming on my YouTube channel. Um, If it's not, I will let you know, but keep an eye on my YouTube channel this week. I'm going to find out all the info tomorrow. So like the zoom link will always be the same and all that shit. So if you want to read, you could jump on the zoom link. If you just want to watch, um, you can go to my YouTube channel and watch it. Um, and it's going to be kind of fun. I'm going to do some kind of different things. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so there's that again, poems about fucking out now at the Etsy shop. Poetic Anarchy Volume 3 out now um, on Amazon. And the Blood Rag Issue 8 out now. And don't forget, on March 1st starts the pre-order crowdfunding campaign, um, which I don't know if it's going to be on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. The last two things I've done have been on Indiegogo, and I feel like I should move to Kickstarter. I don't know. I don't know. Um, But yeah, so the pre-order campaign for winner of your mom's uh, sodomy prize for poetry uh, will be going on and there's going to be tons of awesome perks and tears and shit like that so if you think the fingering in the mundane had a lot of cool shit to choose from you ain't seen fucking shit you ain't seen shit it's going to be fucking awesome um, if you want to do a mentorship kind of thing um, go to I hate slash mentorship see all the stuff there that you can choose from and um, kind of just to give you an idea of what I could do to help you. And then you're going to send me an email to IHateMountWall at gmail.com and tell me what you want to do. And that's how we start that thing. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, you can um, send those to me at IHateMountWall at gmail.com. And don't forget that the next episode of this awesome podcast is going to be part two of my translation talk with Jens. Okay. So, um, get ready for that. Cause that's going to be a burner. All right. So with all that said, keep buying my books, type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.